Good morning. Welcome back everyone. So as you can see behind me, I brought a new car. So I'd kind of been thinking for a while about one of these and um, I finally got one. So just outside my shop here, uh, it's, why did I get one? Well, with, um, with Sylvia's and all the, mo the more popular cars kind of coming up in price at the moment, um, these have been a lot on my mind, especially with the new GR86 coming out. So I think that one is a super good package out of the box. Um, of course, I'd rather have one of those, but this one, these ones have come down a lot in price and they're more affordable and basically all the parts are pretty much the same. All the suspension is the same. Um, the engine is very similar from what I know. Uh, the 2.4 it's just for bore sizes increase the actual size of the engine is exactly the same so i believe all the manifolds and stuff like that all work so i think if you were to get one of these as a base if you could only afford the older one uh, brz 86 fri frs whatever it is in your country that's well priced um or not they're good cars anyway um, you can get one of those and once GRs come down, if you can't afford a new one, you can pretty much swap everything into that, which I think is really good. Because one, um, means you're going to have chassis for the future. And two, you buy good parts of this and it's all transferable anyway. So um, if you were to plan to go down that route, because, um, because basically it's probably the closest thing we've got to a Sylvia. Um, I did take it to the track on the second day I got plates on it and I've driven it around for about a week or so now so I've got a I've had a pretty good amount of driving in it so far and I guess overall impressions of this car um, the handling is super good it's more um, set up for grip driving I'd say all right, let's go, try to do a fast lap. Obviously, like it's all stock, it's stock suspension, so it's not really set up, but it feels more biased to that. It's a bit more understeery, um, and has just overall like pretty good handling, but it's a little tricky to drift. I'll chuck a clip in now um, of the first day I took it out. I've got a clip of my first run, and then like one of the better ones later on in the day. I only had an hour long practice session um, just because that's how it worked so i did a little bit of grip driving a little bit of trying to drift it um, just to get an overall feel for the car <laughs>
as you can see, um, first run didn't go exactly well. Um, went all right, but so you could obviously see I was struggling. Um, basically what it seems like is um, the front setup probably doesn't have enough grip. Like uh, when you transition, it tends to understeer. So it's kind of the, the rear is pushing more than the front. So the only way I could get it to switch was if I applied um, the brakes when I switched at the same time. Um, probably being automatic doesn't help, but I'm not able to stab the clutch and kind of um, brake traction a little easier on transition. And also when you switch on the um, early model 86s, um, this is kind of a bit of, um, not, a, not really a problem, but um, something that's kind of known is the power steering is quite heavy on the early model. So either people would change the power steering computer, which sits just under there, to a Koki one, so like the late model, or you can buy aftermarket ones or like a little controller. But um, from what I've seen for the most part is people normally just switch to the Koki one, uh, the late model one, which gives it a lighter feel. And um, apparently it's not perfect, but um, it's a lot better. So it seems like when you're switching, um, it gets quite heavy, so. There's just little things like that where um, if you were to compare it to an uh, older, um, like more popular chassis, that there's a little, there's a few things you'd want to do first that you wouldn't really need to do on the older stuff. So all that kind of stuff needs working out. And then um, this one's obviously not on coilovers, but from what I've seen is, and from what it actually is, is they don't have much rear stroke. Uh, it's just got a like a very short amount of stroke, so that tends to be a little bit of an issue when you get more power and you have the car lower, it's having enough suspension travel. Um, but there are some companies making some stuff which tends to help, but I think that's one thing that kind of um, is a bit of a negative compared to a Sylvia and stuff like that, whereas Sylvia's have like super long strokes, so it's never an issue. Um, but standard, just driving it around and kind of pushing it, uh, feels like it's got tons of grip, but, um, and it's only on just a 2154517 radial. But yes, when you, when I was drifting it and you push it to the limit, um, it has like a limit and then after that it'll just like spin really fast. But yes, um. It also comes down to it not having much steering angle as well. So that's another tricky part about these cars too. Um, it's because the engine's so wide. Um, means the chassis rails are out wider. And it's, uh, unless you stick the, guard, the fenders way out the guards, it's kind of hard to get it to work. Um, without going to some crazy angle kit. But there have been a few people I've seen recently. Um, companies here in Japan working it out. Um, Things like moving the rack forward and um, longer lower arm, playing with the caster seems to, seems to be a big thing. And it sounds like it's getting closer to a Sylvia. I guess that's kind of like, um, that's what everyone's benchmark is Sylvia because they're just so good. Uh, I guess I will kind of walk around it now and show you around about what, what it's got. Um, so yeah, I brought this one off the auctions. Uh, it was an R grade. Um, it's had a small crash in the front. Doesn't look like any of the frame or anything's been replaced. It just looks like it's had a bit of a hit in the bumper. Um, but yeah, the funny thing about auctions is uh, dealer auctions either, it can be really good or really bad. Um, in this case, um, actually pretty good. So I already knew about this. Um, so I'll probably get a new front bumper for it. Just because uh, the clips are broken in there and it's all cut in there. So I think the easiest thing is just to find another black bumper and swap that. It's got TRD lip and side steps. So I'll just swap that onto the new bumper. And then happy days. Uh, standard wheels, um, standard suspension. Cool thing, Project Mu rotors and brake pads. Uh, they're just like a street brake pad and the rotors, it should look pretty worn, but it still is a cool thing. 
that I didn't realize the car had. So that was a good surprise. Then this guy, um, I removed a lot from the interior, but he's gone pretty to, like to town on all the like little carbon stickers and stuff. This is a little TRD one, and another TRD sticker down there. Yep, yeah, on the rear again, it's got those Project Mir rotors and pads, so that's great. Uh, the handbrake on these is a drum style, so it locks up really well. I don't think they've upgraded the pad in there. Um, it doesn't, it, it locks good, but um, I think if it had a natural Project Mir D1 pad in it, it'd be even better. So that's one really cool thing about these cars. They already come standard like that with a really well, good working handbrake. Uh, moving back, standard exhaust. Uh, didn't come with these covers. Um, they didn't come with the tips either. So I just bought these tips. It's like a little cover that goes on. Um, the boot trunk also didn't have this spoiler. Just had holes. It had a spoiler already removed on it. it had a different one that goes down here. I think it might have been the TRD one. So just got the early model standard spoiler. I think it looks. They look a lot better with a spoiler on them, in my opinion. Standard tail lights. Um, trunk. Um, a lot of stuff in there. But it's got all like basic tools, jack screwdriver, tow hooks, spare tire. And there's surprisingly a good amount of space in here, especially when you fold down the rear seats. You can fit, it, fit like a lot in here. So that's quite nice. Yeah, moving on to the inside. Inside's all standard too. I need to give it a clean also. It's pretty dirty. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's like this isn't standard, it's like uh, like a carbon sticker thing. And then this is all like a new carbon one. And they had stickers on here too. And other doors, like wood grain ones and weird ones like that. So I fairly quickly removed that. And just factory, just all stock in the back. Um, when I was driving on the street, um, these seats felt pretty good. Um, the upper support is nice, but there's probably not enough lower support if you're going to take it to the circuit. Um, like it's drivable. It's better than like most standard seats, but I think for me, probably something with a bit more side support is a bit better. So, but it'd probably be one thing I, I would change. I actually like the standard steering wheel. It feels really nice. Um, it's a GT. Um, GT Limited or whatever you call it, call it. So it's got push start. It comes with a LSD, which works really well. Um, they also put this cover on, which I didn't really like at the start, but actually I've come to like it now. And standard cup holders, which is a nice thing to have in a sports car, which most of the older ones don't normally have. Uh, reverse camera or AC, everything. Works super well as you'd expect. Automatic. Um, the automatic's actually really good in these cars. So um, I don't regret not getting a manual. Um, the, mo the majority of the driving I do is just going to a informal work. So the benefits of um, having a manual um, are not really, um, the negatives kind of outweigh the positives for me and having a manual. And then engine bay, it's fairly standard. There's a few things that are kind of um, some improvements. Uh, it's got one of those Cusco oil coolers. Um, but one thing I like about the new GR86 or BRZ is it actually come with an oil cooler um, factory. So it's a similar one like this, which is one that feeds into the water lines to cool it, not an actual oil cooler as such, um, as the traditional ones would be. Um, so that's really good. These cars um, are meant to be fairly bad with oil cooling from standard, even though they are in a four cylinder. You wouldn't think that, that they would get too hot, but apparently that's an issue with them. So great that that has it on it. It's a little bit more, um, 
this security insurance for driving the car hard. I do, I would like to get an oil um, temperature gauge if I was to do some more track driving, just for that peace of mind. Um, I'm not sure what maker this is, but it's got this um, aftermarket intake pipe. Standard ear box with this um, tape. I'm not sure how much this tape actually does to keep the temp, keep the heat out of the intake, but it's got it. Uh, it's got an HKS um, filter replacement. It's got the fuses that have been changed to uh, magical fuse, which apparently slightly increases the horsepower and torque. There's some dyno. Um, dyno videos which they've done on hot version I think um, Max Arito sells them and they did a whole bunch of videos on that so if you want to watch that you can probably find it pretty easy if you search like that and 8.6 um, supposedly they do do something so I guess that's cool I probably wouldn't buy them myself but it's kind of a cool thing to have it just came with the car um, it's got some aftermarket pulleys so I guess that's cool too <laughs> it's not something i really care for too much um but yeah also like none of that stuff was mentioned as well which is really cool so super stoked on that um, standard exhaust manifold and not much to comment on there and yes more more tape and stuff like that the guy's gone to town with putting tape and random stuff everywhere i'm not sure what h means either so i guess um I won't even know. But yes, um, I mean, these are probably going to be one of the more important cars in the future and when it comes to people that want to go and drive and enjoy the track. So, I'm stoked that I own one now and I can slowly modify it to how I like and kind of explore the positives and minuses with them. I think what would be I think what would be cool in the future, um, maybe a supercharger or a turbo would be quite cool. But um, for now I guess the main things for, for now I think what, what would be really nice is kind of adjusting the front suspension, maybe putting in a rack spacer because even if I don't drift it, even if I don't take it drifting, like the steering lock on it is really bad. So just like parking and stuff like that is kind of a pain. So a little more angle, maybe a little bit more front camber and caster just to get a little bit more front grip on turning would be nice. So that's probably my main um, point about the car. Other than that, it feels really good. Uh, diff as well, but the final drive is a little bit long, so a shorter final would probably be nice too. So the front geometry and a shorter final, and I think this car would be so much better. Even if you don't change that, it's a great car for just um, everyday driving. Anyway. Cheers for watching. Hopefully I get one of my RX-7s out soon. Probably the FD before it runs out of inspection. But um, FC is still a work in progress since that last video. It's getting better. Um, so I'll probably update you with that, this and the other car. All of them in between work as we're super busy here at the moment. But um, yeah, any questions or whatever, send me a message and I'm always happy to reply and talk to anyone. All right, bye guys.